Good morning everyone and welcome to our service here for Strain Presbyterian on Sunday the 31st of January. We've reached the end of the month already. Um, just a couple of announcements this morning. Or just, uh, just first one just to say thank you to everybody who uh, donated to our three charities, to Food Bank and to Simon Community and Belfast Central Mission. There were some photos posted on Thursday on Facebook of all the donations. So thank you for everyone who came down um, either during the week or on Thursday to donate. It was much appreciated. Uh, those donations have been taken to those um, different charities and they are delighted by the su practical support that Strain have been able to provide to them. So thank you for getting involved, folks. Um, next month there'll be another donation day as well. Uh, we'll give you details of that closer to the time and about who we're supporting and what items we're looking for. But it's a very practical way which we can support uh, those charities around us. So thank you for that. The other announcement is just to say that obviously we continue to be online at this time uh, and our service will go out each Sunday by Sunday, uh, trying something different this Sunday. And then Monday to Friday in the mornings at half nine, I will continue to be doing the Bible readings. And then on Wednesday nights, we continue uh, with our Bible study at half seven. And for this Wednesday coming and then two weeks after that, so the first and the third Wednesdays in the month, uh, we'll also have a time of prayer on Zoom afterwards. So the Bible study will actually live stream on Facebook and I'll have Zoom running at the same time. And then whenever we finish uh, the Bible study aspect of it, Facebook will close down and our prayer time will be via Zoom. Details of that Zoom meeting will go up onto um, Facebook and onto our website uh, at the start of the week. So you'll be able to see the details there and the link in. And if you have any bother or you're not sure how to do it, if you want to give me a call, I can talk you through some basic steps of how to do that. So those are all the announcements that we have for this morning. Um, I have note of a couple of birthdays. Let me share those with you this morning. So the birthdays that I have are Joe Brown, happy birthday to, to Joe, to Harry Ancatel as well. And for the incoming week, we have Kirsty Patton and Stuart Fullin. So happy birthday to you all. Let's pause and let's pray. Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for the sense of family as we worship together um, in this way. And thank you that we can still celebrate birthdays together. We do thank you for Joe and for Harry, for Kirsty and Stuart, and ask for your blessings to be upon them and their families. Continue to look after them, especially at this time um, of lockdown. So Lord, thank you. Continue with us now, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. We come to worship God. We come to praise him. Uh, just let me read you these opening verses of Psalm 34. I will praise the Lord at all times. I will constantly speak his praises. I will boast only in the Lord. Let all who are helpless take heart. Come, let us tell of the Lord's greatness. Let us exalt his name together. So let us praise and worship God as Lewis and Alexandra lead us this morning. Thank you. 
kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living Lord. Hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your buried body began to breathe out of the silence. you buy with that two pounds? Now think about that for a minute. What would you go out and buy? Would it be maybe a chocolate bar and a drink? Would it be um, a pen for school? Uh, would you buy a, a colouring book? Or would you try and buy a toy with two pounds? I mean, what sort of toy could you buy with this? I would think that there's not very much that you could buy. Sure there isn't. Maybe you would say instead, let me put the two pounds in my piggy bank or in my savings and I'll save up and then whenever I've got some more, I'll buy what something else that I want. Two pounds doesn't get you very much, does it? Well, there's a story in the Bible about a man and he owed somebody else a sum of money that was round about like two pounds to us today. And because that man couldn't pay back the two pounds, uh, the man who he borrowed from got really cross and he got so angry. Um, in those days, in Bible days, if you, if you owed somebody money and you couldn't pay it back, they could have you thrown into jail or have your family thrown into jail until you could get the money to pay them back. And the man who was owed the two pounds, he was so cross with the other man that he said, I'm gonna have you thrown into jail. Now, the man who was owed the two pounds, what he didn't tell the man who owed him that two pounds was he owed somebody else an awful lot of money. I mean, it was thousands and thousands of pounds. And that man didn't throw him in jail. That man said to him, look, you can have an awful lot longer. You can pay me off just whenever you want. He said, in fact, you know what? Forget about it. And you, know, you don't have to worry about it. And yet, he worried about just two pounds that was owed to him. You know, God has forgiven us for so much, boys and girls. God forgives us for all of our sins and doesn't hold it against us because of what Jesus has done for us. And yet, sometimes we find it really hard to forgive somebody who's done something to us. We find it really hard whenever they say sorry for us to say, that's okay, don't worry about it, I forgive you. And that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to forgive people who have done something against us. The Lord's Prayer is something that we learn, well, something that I learned as a child. And part of the Lord's Prayer is, forgive us our trespasses, which is sins, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
So if somebody does something wrong against us, we should forgive them. And Jesus taught his disciples, you know, we ask God to forgive us and God does forgive us. So we should forgive other people who have done wrong things against us. So boys and girls, I want you to think about it. Who has done something against you which isn't right? Something that hurt you? Something that was nasty maybe? And has that person come and said sorry to you? Well, if that person does come and say sorry, then forgive them. And even if that person hasn't said sorry, forgive them anyway. Don't hold it against them because that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to forgive other people just like he has forgiven us. That's part of the Lord's Prayer, boys and girls. So today, just as I pray for you, let us say the Lord's Prayer together. If you don't know it, then you can listen. Uh, if you do know it, then please say it along with me. Um, or the any adults watching with you, they can say it as well if they know it. Uh, and let's say the Lord's Prayer together. So let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you, boys and girls, for listening so well. I'm going to read God's word now. I'm going to read um, one verse from Matthew chapter 5. And then I'm going to read some verses from Psalm 34. So Matthew chapter 5. Verse 9 says this, God blesses those who work for peace, for they will be called the children of God. And then the verses from Psalm 34 are verses 8 to 14. This is what it says. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, the joys of those who take refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his godly people. For those who fear him will have all that they need. Even strong lions sometimes go hungry, but those who trust in the Lord will lack no good thing. Come, my children, and listen to me. I will teach you to fear the Lord. Does anyone want to live a life that is long and prosperous? prosperous? Then keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn away from evil and do good. Search for peace and work to maintain it. Amen. And we ask that God would bless this reading of his word. Lewis and Alexandra are going to lead us again in praise.
let's remember the, the three charities that we collected for this past week. The Belfast Central Mission, Simon Community and our food bank and the work that they do. And let's also remember the, the deaconesses within our church at the minute um, and the work that they do spread across Ireland, uh, connecting with various people in different circumstances. So let's pause together and let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for how we can join together in this way and continue to worship you even though we are disconnected. And Lord, thank you that you continue to listen and to hear us and to answer all of our prayers. Lord, we thank you for the opportunities that you have given us this past week as a church family to be able to support others who are in need. And we do remember our local food bank and the Simon community and the Belfast Central Mission. Lord, it's hard for maybe for us to understand sometimes how there are so many people in our town who are in food poverty, but we know there are. And we thank you for all the churches that support the food bank. We thank you for all the individuals who support, for all the different collection points that there are around the town. And we pray that at this time, the food bank would get in the supplies that they need to be able to support others. This is so difficult, Lord, with people being furloughed, wages being cut, people losing jobs. It is more of a need than ever. So thank you um, for the vision of your people to set up this food bank. And we ask that you would continue to use it to be able to bring help to those who are in need. We remember Belfast Central Mission as well, Father, as they support our young people who are struggling and with the difficulties that they have as they look to help some of them get into housing and just to be able to have a roof over their heads. Um, thank you for the gifts of toiletries that were given. Lord, for those young people who are homeless, who BCM support as well, uh, we just pray that the, the need and the supplies we get to those who are most in need so that they can be helped and that they can know that there are people who care about them because of your love for them uh, and that they would experience your love in this very practical way. And the same with Simon Community, Father. We thank you um, for this charity, for how they have this facility in Bangor, housing people from this area who are homeless. Lord, we pray that it would be a safe place for people to live, that it would be a welcoming place, that um, for those who find themselves destitute, that this would be a place where they would know that they are loved and cared for. And they would very much feel that. Lord, when we think about our churches, we thank you for everyone who is serving you in, in different capacities in our churches, both in paid and voluntary roles. But we especially remember the deaconesses this morning. Uh, Lord, they do so much work. Yes, they particularly work with, with the ladies in our church, but they also work with families and they work with youth. And Lord, they visit in hospitals um, whenever they can, and they maintain that important connection for so many people. At the minute, it's hard for our deaconesses because of our lockdown, Lord, to be able to do what they normally do. So please help them as they look for ways of connecting with church families and with non-church families, as they look for ways of reaching out to those who are in need. Show them the, the, the need, show them the opportunities, Father, and enable them and equip them to be able to make these connections. Lord, continue with us now, and especially now as we turn to your word, we ask that you would help us to be able to hear you, to be encouraged by you, and to be challenged by you. Lord, continue with us now, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. And let us now turn to God's word, and let's see what God has to say to us this morning. I want to give you word this morning and ask you what image comes into your head when you think of that word. The word is peace. So have a think about that word for a moment and think about the image that you get when you think of peace. Some people might think of a dove or an olive branch. There's an image of the two combined together. Dove is quite often seen as, a, as a, an image of peace along with the olive branch. Maybe you think of the sign that you can make with your fingers, a sign of peace. Some people see it as a sign of victory. It certainly was used for that in World War II, but again, it's also a symbol of peace. 
Another symbol of peace has been a symbol used by, for nuclear disarmament around the world for a long time. And it's this symbol here. Maybe that's what you think of when you think of peace. You could also think of different things. There's also a peace flag, uh, which is used, which is like a rainbow flag, and it's meant to represent the nations of the world coming together. Maybe that's what you think of with that word, peace. Peace is something that we all look for at times, isn't it? Uh, maybe especially at the minutes with uh, working from home and homeschooling and everything else that's going on. Maybe peace is something that you, you search for. There's one of Snoopy. Happiness is peace and quiet. And maybe whenever you think of peace, you think of quiet. Uh, and maybe you are in search of a quiet life somewhere where you are not hassled, somewhere where you don't have to face conflict, somewhere where you can just be left alone. Maybe that's your idea of peace. When it comes to the Beatitudes and to the verse that was read this morning from Matthew chapter 5, verse 9, certainly that's not the sense that you get. It says in that verse there, New Living Translation puts it this way, God blesses those who work for peace. Another way of translating it is, blessed are the peacemakers. So whenever you think about that definition, peace and peacemaker, they're not the same. Peace is actually quite a, a passive thing. It's something that you're not really doing anything in, in our sense, uh, other than maybe running away from situations which causes conflict running away from places where we, we think there would be trouble, there would be noise, um, seeking a place of solitude. I and mean, quite often you see now people walking around with, with what's called noise-canceling headphones on because they want peace. They don't want to hear the noise of people around them. They don't want to hear voices or arguing. They're looking for peace. And maybe that's your idea of what peace is. Some are quiet somewhere where you can be alone, somewhere where there's no hassle. From the language point of view, that's not what the meaning even of the word peace is. In Greek, peace really has a, a meaning of this. Peace means to have all things that are good. It means to have everything that enriches your life. So peace is not that absence of conflict. It's not that absence of noise or arguing, but rather it's everything which brings you joy. Another way of looking at it is peace is you actively working to establish right relationships. And that's the sort of peace which this verse in Matthew chapter 5 talks about. It's that God blesses those who work for peace. The psalm which we read as well uh, talks about that in Psalm 34 verse 14. It says search for peace and work to maintain it. As Christians in this world, as those who follow Christ, we have a role to play and this beatitude talks about that. It talks about how we should actively be helping to reconcile people how we should be working to establish right relationships, how we, we should be taking that model of Christ to do that. It's not about running away from the conflict, but it's about getting involved in it. It's about helping people uh, and, and bringing then the peace that God has. You see, that, that whole verse says this, blessed are those who work for peace, for they will be called the children of God. God wants us to have this sense that we have a calling. God wants us to realize that we have a role to play. And part of that role is peacemaking. Think of what Jesus did whenever he came to this earth. There was a war and it raging then and it still rages now between goods and evil. There's the good of God's creation. There's the evil of Satan and what he has done that battle between good and sin. Jesus came not to be passive, not just to sit back and watch it happening, but rather to get actively involved. 
so actively involved, in fact, that he gave his life so that we could have our sins forgiven. If you look at what all the disciples do as they follow along, they are getting actively involved in the communities around them, helping people, bringing the word of God, seeking out where there is conflict to bring resolution. It's a pattern which we see right the way through the Bible. Go even go into the Old Testament. Go to the kings who were appointed. And a role of a king was to adjudicate or to sit in courts and make decisions. Think of Solomon. We've been reading Proverbs um, on um, a weekday morning, reading, uh, uh, reading his writings and his wisdom. Think of Solomon. Think of the two ladies. Uh, one, their baby dies. The other one lives. Uh, I think of his wisdom to discern which is the right mother whenever he says, cut the baby in two. And, and the mother says, oh, no, no, just let her have it. She doesn't want to see anything come to harm to her baby. Solomon worked to bring peace in that situation. And right the way through the Bible, we have different examples of that. And that's what God calls us to do. We're not called into this world simply to sit by and be observers. The the UN at times who call themselves peacemakers are accused of being observers. And they do, they send out observers just to watch. That's not the role of peacemakers from God's point of view. God wants us to actually get stuck in. He wants us to see where people are struggling, where people are failing. He wants us to get alongside and to help them. See, when you think about um, that definition of peace, to establish right relationships, we've got a role of letting people know who God is and what he has done for them. We have a role of sharing the gospel, the good news about Jesus, because that's what gospel means. It means good news. So we're, we're told to go out and to share that good news about Jesus. If we share that good news, and if we get involved with people, then we become peacemakers. That's a challenge that we face today, especially at the minute whenever we can't do so many things. You know, we're the church here in Strain. We're a church surrounded by housing. And we want to be part of this community. We want to be recognized as a house of God or a place of worship or as a community of God's people. We want to be recognized as people who are there to help. And the reason that we want that to be recognized is because we want to bring them God's love. We want them to see that God cares for them and that God is interested in them so that they will, they will explore more about God, so they can establish a relationship with God. Being a peacemaker is not passive. Being a peacemaker is active. Now, maybe you don't see yourself as a peacemaker. Maybe even you see yourself as being a bit hot-headed and a bit quick-tempered at times. Again, God teaches tells us to, we have to learn not to be like that. We have to learn to let things ride over our heads. As Jesus said, turn the other cheek. When somebody has a go at us, we have to learn to be silent, to let them speak. That's not actually being passive. That's actually showing them that we are not respond. And if we take that sort of attitude into every situation, then we start to build the opportunities to speak to people. If people see that they can trust us, that we'll not lash out at them, that we'll not judge them, but rather that we will come alongside them, get to know them, get to understand them, get to love them, then they will open up to us and we can start to share the gospel to them. That's what Jesus did. Jesus didn't, whenever he went into somewhere, didn't suddenly start off by preaching or teaching or or telling them parables. The model which Jesus had was people would bring their sick to Jesus and he would heal them. At times, whenever they were hungry, he fed them. And then the people would sit and listen to what he had to say and start to understand why he had come. Look, whenever he, at the response, whenever he went into Jerusalem, when they cut down the palm branches 
and they, they, were, they praised and they welcomed him into the city. And then as the, the Pharisees and the teachers turned the crowd against Jesus, they were active in their role. They were active in not building a right relationship, but in causing division. God wants us to do the opposite. He wants us to break down those barriers. He wants us to be the peacemakers, to be the build the peace bridges, to take down the walls and to open up his word to others. And that being the case, then it's what it says on the screen behind me. God blesses those who work for peace, for they will be called the children of God. See, if we truly are children of God, then we want to do God's will. We don't want to say, I'm a Christian, or I believe, and then hide away. We shouldn't. We need to take a stand for God. And taking a stand means being someone who works for peace. Peace means so many things, doesn't it, in this world? Think of the land that we live in. Peace means no conflict, no warring between um, different sides. But true peace is knowing who God is. True peace is knowing the reason why God made this world. True peace is knowing that God wants to have a personal relationship with each and every one of us. And whenever we have that true relationship, then we are children of God. And then we are called to share that. We'll we'll come on to that as we start to work our way through the rest of the Sermon on the Mount. But just think about that this morning. Think about that verse which is on the screen behind me. God blesses those who work for peace, for they will be called the children of God. Do you call yourself a child of God? Do you say that you have that personal relationship with God? Do you call yourself a Christian, born again, a believer, saved? Whatever phrase you use, Are you a child of God's? Well, then you're called to be a peacemaker. It's a big challenge. It's something that we cannot do on our own. It's something that we need God's help in doing. And as we do it, God tells us that he will bless us. He will help us. He will equip us or give us the skills that we need. He will give us those opportunities to share his words those opportunities to bring his love so that we can be peacemakers. So in this week that lies ahead, maybe you'll be seeking peace in the house. Maybe you'll be seeking that quiet corner where you can crawl away and read a book or you just want to switch the TV on for a short time and, and ignore the noise that's behind you. Maybe you have your headphones that you'll put on to cancel out the noise that is around you. As you find that sort of peace, remember that we are called to be peacemakers. Let us pause and let us pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for the message which you bring to us about being peacemakers. Father, this is actually a big challenge for us. This is something which isn't easy, but which is difficult. So something that we need you to help us with. So, Lord, please do show us those opportunities where we can bring your peace, where we can build peace. And help us not to be scared and to shy away. Help us not to turn tail and run. But help us to be bold for you and to to step into that situation in your strength, with your um, direction and your guidance, and to bring your love. Father, thank you. And be with us now, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you, folks, for joining with us this morning as we have worshipped together here in Strain. Trust that you would know God's peace and God's blessing as well as God's challenge through his words. And as you go into the rest of this week, I just pray that you take care uh, and that you stay safe. So God bless. If you want to join us again in the morning at half nine for the Bible reading, please feel free to do so. Um, On Wednesday evening, we have our Bible study at 7.30. We'll be going into a time of prayer uh, at around about eight o'clock through Zoom. Details of that will go up on on Facebook. And again, if you need some help, please just get in touch with me and I will help you with that. But in the meantime, take care and God bless.